Hello everyone, in today's video we will set up a third person camera controller like the one that can be seen in Gears of War. We will change pretty much everything about how the traditional adventure camera works in order to get similar results. In order to create this we will need Unity, Game Creator and a shooter or a melee module. What I'll be showing is one of the ways that things can be done but obviously can be done in different ways. So let's dive in. So before setting up our scene, I will show the end result. So first thing you will notice is camera doesn't move with the mouse. Uh, camera is a bit up close, bit to the left. Um, when we turn, we turn at a much slower pace than normal and the camera moves with us. Um, next up is we're walking by default and like Gears of War, while we hold the button, we run and the camera shakes. Now the last thing um, is actually picking up a gun. And if we actually aim, the camera move, will move up close. So these are all the, the trademarks of the traditional third person shooter camera. Um, I'm using Gears of War as an example because it's, well, it's a really well known one and it's, uh, you know, quite honestly a good uh, game to benchmark against. So let's set up our scene. So for the purpose of this tutorial I will be uh, reusing my dual weapon scene um, simply because it has both shooter and melee. Um, if you're only doing shooter, you know, do whatever. Um, I just wanted this scene because, you know, I can um, I can basically, uh, you know, pick up uh, a sword, or I can pick up a handgun. So let me duplicate this. I'm going to rename this to um, 01 TPS Tutorial. TPS stands for uh, Third Person Shooter, in case you didn't know. Let's open this up. Now, um, we're only going to do a couple of changes here. So change one is our camera. Um, so make sure all of these options are visible. Um, this is what it was by uh, this is what I did in our uh, player controller setup. Um, but if you didn't follow that one, you know your values might be slightly different. Doesn't really matter um, because we're going to change most of them anyway. And this is it. Now I'm going to explain what all of this was as well. Um, so this is the offset, so character slightly to the left. Um, you can see this in most third person shooters. Reason for that is that if he wouldn't be slightly to the left or you know right, um, you wouldn't be able to see him aim at all. The camera would be fixed right behind him. So that doesn't really work. That's why you know third person shooters do that. Um, this is uh, in order to um, Oh, it needs to be 1.6. Um, this is making sure the camera goes up a bit. Um, the higher this is, the higher the camera will go. Um, this is a right position for me um, in combination with the zoom. Now, I'm not allowing zoom, but the initial zoom will be 1.5, which is a bit close up, but not too close. Now, this is the most important part. Um, because we're not allowing any um, camera orbit here, um, we need to make sure the camera stays behind the player. Now, reposition time is zero for me because I want the camera to move with the player. I don't want it to take time to reposition. Um, and the speed needs to be low as well. The higher this is, um, it's going to look weird, basically. You will move... Um, you will move the camera along uh, the player and the camera will take time to reposition behind. It just looks odd. So going to keep it at this. i um, going to rename this to TPS just to show what we're actually doing here. And let me duplicate this one. I'm going to rename this to uh, Zoom. Um, so this will be the aim camera basically. Now in the Zoom one um, we're just going to change a couple of values. Um, basically, I want the field of view to be smaller. Um, always happens in games while you're aiming, and I'm sure that will happen in real life as well. You basically see less. 
and I want it to be slightly up closer to the action. So this is only a little, but it already has a decent effect. Um, and that's it, really, not changing anything else, leaving it at it this. Now, next up, um, going to disable running, completely optional, but I want a button to decide if I run or not. Um, but again, completely optional here. Um, this is important. Um, we need to lower this. So in, initially at 140, I think I'm going to lower it to 100 even. Um, so once we press left or right, um, this decides how fast um, we rotate. Um, so that's why I want to keep this quite low. Um, at the initial 540, we would basically make a pretty much 180 U-turn, uh, which is not what I want to happen. Um, so yeah, that's it on the player itself. Um, now I could be adding a lot of triggers here to the player, but it would become messy. It already is in all honesty. So I'm going to create a empty, calling it TPS Actions. Let's add that S um, and adding all of my triggers here. So we're going to add four triggers, um, which is exactly why I moved it to a child. Um, let's add those actions. Now this is going to be my running, um, so key holds. Um, so there we go. Um, so basically, um, while I'm holding shift, um, something will happen, which will be running. And on key hold, while I let go, which is key up, um, he's going to stop running. And running will also shake the camera, um, like the Gears of War roadie run. Now, this is important, um, depending on if you're using, um, you know, melee or a shooter. Um, for the shooter component, I will use on aim. Um, if you're using melee, um, you can have it, um, I don't know, on, let's see, on attack, for example, I think Gears of War, the new one, uh, God of War, sorry. Um, the new one actually does that when you attack, the camera moves up a bit. Um, might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what happens. Um, but I'm going to use aim here um, for the shooter. And we're going to do that again while we stop. So when we start aiming, we want the camera to zoom. And while we stop aiming, we want the camera to zoom out. Now, let's set those up first. So that's 10. Um, camera. Where are you, camera? There we go. So now we need to zoom. So we want him to zoom. Now I'm adding a slight uh, transition time. Um, the longer, you know, the higher this value, the longer it will take for him to be in the aim position. Um, don't take too long, but adding zero just snaps it, um, which in my opinion doesn't look great, but, you know, that's a personal opinion. Um, and then I'll have uh, the normal one back once we uh, stop aiming. Now I'm going to add a little cheat here, um, which is going to I'll explain that as well. Um, if you're using a controller or have a completely different button set up, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't even have to do any of this. Um, but for some reason, by default, while I press um, the right mouse, um, doesn't matter why, it will automatically re-enable running. Now, I've, <laughs> I honestly don't know why this happens. I removed the shooter, melee components, doesn't matter. It just automatically re-enables running and that's it. So, because aiming is the right mouse button, um, I'm, you know, making sure that it disables again. Now, I could have changed this entire trigger to on uh, right mouse hold. And then for some reason, this wouldn't work. So having um, can run at the end wouldn't actually disable running again. So... Maybe it's a bug, maybe it's actually tied to something, I'm not really sure. Um, but that's why I'm using on aim, which even though it's using the same button, um, the trigger will disable running again.
it's a bit of a workaround, um, but I don't know why the initial, you know, issue even exists, really. I don't know if it's, maybe it's not even an issue, maybe it's supposed to happen. Um, but if you're using a controller, I'm sure you wouldn't even have this, this issue at all. Now we want him to run. Um, so when we press shift, we want him to run. Great. And we want um, the camera to shake. Now I'm using sustain. If you do burst, uh, burst is more for an explosion. Um, sustain is, um, you know, controlled shaking. Um, these are low values, but you know, if this would be a lot higher constantly, you'd get motion sickness basically. So um, let's just copy all of these over. Now this is what happens when we let go. Um, so when we will let go, we don't want him to run and we want to stop shaking. And keeping this low, um, don't want it to last too long. But if you have animations where he's catching his breath um, at the end of a run, for example, you can have this higher. Because then, you know, the camera still shaking would actually make sense. So there you have it, um, the basic setup. Um, so let's see what this actually looks like. And I forgot I had my beautiful cinematic on, um, but you know it shouldn't really matter. So um, yeah, as you can see, I'm moving my mouse, nothing's happening. Um, I'm walking, I'm not running, and the rotation speed is um, pretty low. Um, but still quite fast, actually, when you think about it for a third-person shooter. So maybe I should have even lowered it in a way. Now, um, this is the default. Um, we're running but we're not running we're rolling that's interesting um this has to do with the melee evade there we go um if you're using the melee and you have this default setup um, where shifts uh, rolls either change it or change running or do whatever i'm removing evade because i'm not using it right now anyway let's try that again so yeah having two actions tied to the same button is you know, most likely not going to work as you want it to work. So let's give that another go. Um, there you go. And that's it. Um, rerun. You can see the camera shake. All nice, you know, action-y. And then when we let go, the camera stops shaking. Now you can have shaking while you walk as well. Um, I know, I think in Gears of War that happens a little bit. Um, I tried it, it becomes pretty annoying in my opinion, um, but that's personal, you can add it to, you know, just normal walking as well. Now, while we aim, you see that he will remain positioned towards the center of the screen. Um, that's really great, you don't have to change anything there. Um, and then he goes back, and as you can see, he doesn't go running. So, that's the, the, complete, um, the complete shooter setup, basically. Um, this is a camera controller um, pretty similar to Gears of War. I know it's not exactly going to be the same, um, but it, I'd say it's pretty pretty close, really. So yeah, there you have it. I um, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.